In her new role as MAC co-chair, Professor Kole Gamlisana has appealed to South Africans to strictly adhere to all further restrictions expected to be imposed by government ahead of the Easter weekend. With growing concerns over a potential third wave of coronavirus infections after the Easter holiday period, Mlisana says people must try and avoid large gatherings. It's going to be important that we really adhere to whatever restrictions that government is going to come up with. I know we're facing the Easter weekend not, you know, within a few days. And so it's going to be important to stick to whatever numbers that government is going to give to us. Lisana will co-chair the committee with Professor Marion Jacobs and says a priority will be to monitor that the country's vaccination campaign is on track. You get a sense that people are not really clear as to what is happening, when is phase two coming in, and is there going to be prioritization when phase two kicks in. So I think it's going to be important for us to advise government as to how to articulate, really communicate these messages to the public. Increasing manufacturing for the vaccines in the country is also important. Professor Mlisana, who was already a member of the advisory committee, says the likelihood and severity of a third wave of infections will largely depend on the behaviour of South Africans in continuing to adhere to health and safety regulations, such as wearing a mask and social distancing. Nozin Mia, SABC News. Welcome to another edition of the Spiritual Revival Hour. We just closed out the uh, National International Women's History Month, and uh, I was, had tried to have some uh, outstanding women on during that month from Wilmington in Newcastle County. So it's easy to go to the internet and find outstanding people. But I wanted this year doing not only doing Women's History Month but Black History Month to highlight. Uh, black historians from Wilmington and Newcastle County and also uh, during the Women's Month, we did the same thing. So I want to thank those of you who thought that was a good idea. You went along with me. Uh, the response was great. Uh, we closed out the last Sunday with an uh, interview with a young lady who I worked with, White grew up in Wilmington. Now she was the first uh, African-American U.S. representative representing the state of Delaware and also uh, the first female. So I thought she would be an outstanding person. I worked with her husband, Ted Blunt, for many years, 
and also Lisa did some outstanding things. So uh, to those of you who called me and congratulated me, you thought the interview was outstanding. Uh, you also said that you learned a lot about her. Some of you watched her grow up, but you didn't know the things that she was involved in. Sometimes we know of people, but we don't know about people. So I certainly want to thank you for that. The next thing I want to remind you that we are continuing to encourage you uh, to get tested and get your vaccination shots. Please do that, friend. Uh, stay safe, healthy, and alive. Uh, there are those of you sometimes in life we relax and we take things for granted. The COVID-19 is nothing to take for granted. Please, please stay safe, healthy, and alive. And the only way you can do that is to be mindful of the things that you're supposed to do and the things you should be doing in order to stay alive. All right? This is uh, Easter Sunday, and we want you to remember what that's all about. There would not have been no resurrection if it hadn't have been a crucifixion. Just keep those two points in mind. We, we, we celebrate Easter. People celebrate Easter in different ways. A lot of people take it as a dress-up day. Put on your new outfits. Get new outfits. I know when I was young, I looked forward to Easter to come because I would get a new outfit on Easter. So I, I didn't know too much about the Lord and Jesus Christ. I had to go to church and all that, but I went to church like all other young men because the young girls went to church. <laughs> but on Easter, I know I would get a new outfit. So a lot of our, our young people have that same thing in mind. But what we want to do is remind you that there is a purpose for Easter. And as we go through the COVID-19 virus, a lot of people are suffering in many different ways all type of different circumstances people are going through with. So as we celebrate Easter, let's think about what Jesus went through with, that we might have a right to the tree of life. He suffered on the cross of Calvary. On Easter, he rose, not just an ordinary rising, but he rose with all power in his hand. So as we celebrate Easter, remember, there would never have been an Easter, there would never have been a resurrection if there hadn't been a crucifixion. So we are going through a sort of crucifixion now with the different circumstances of suffering, trials, and tribulations. So we want to admonish you to trust God Follow the procedures and the policies that you need to follow in order that you might stay alive. Today we have on this Easter Sunday a young man that worked with me for years, no stranger to you in the community. We are so happy to have him here, a good friend of mine. And often people talk about what I did in the development of lease access here and many years and the turkey drives and all the stuff I did in the community, I would not have been able to offer directions for those things if it hadn't been for people in the background. I often call the name of certain people. I have no problem giving people credit for the job that they played in, my, in supporting me in the 50 plus years that I was in this community and doing this community. I thank Brother Ivan and the crew here for uh, 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 dedicating the studio, uh, uh, studio here as for me and other people who have worked with me with the Turkey Drives and all of that. So I, I never want to forget to thank you for the role that you played in my success over 50 years. But this young man that worked with me also, we had all types of meetings all times of night. Uh, financially, 
He supported me spiritually. Uh, when I was down and out, I, we would have breakfast and have lunch and all that. He had his own program here, not only supported me, but he had his own program. Now, there is something that I use, there's a slogan that I use here on the air. During election time, not the person, not the party, but the person. That slogan came from my relationship with Brother Charlie Copeland. Welcome to the program, Charlie. Twin, it's it's so wonderful to have you uh, to have you invite me back. I I, I very much appreciate it. I mean, I, I, I I'm just I, I'm really humbled. I mean, it just you you had very kind words there about me, but but you know, let's be honest, you've 50 plus years, right? I mean, there there wouldn't be. And in many ways, there wouldn't be cable television at all the way it is today if you hadn't pushed at people like Rollins and all way back in the day. I mean, we're talking what the '60s and 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 so. So uh, I just came along at a time when maybe you needed somebody from the outside who could give you a little help because things you know, ebb and flow. And I was there at the right time. And 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 uh, I I like to think that I'm a good judge of character. And and you're a man of great character. Charlie, and, not only were you there at the right time, you were there in the wrong times too. <laughs> <laughs> I had to say it right. There are times when I was scuffling to, to maintain the lease access and uh, you were there and uh, another y young man that uh, was there was Tom Gordon also. Uh, you and Tom Gordon, along with others, but you all were there when others was not there. And I, I, I often think about the times when I was scuffling trying to keep this program on air. Two or three times there, you know, the cable company, they wanted to close it down. Yes, they did. Close lease access down, so... Uh, we managed to keep it going. So it's always a pleasure to have you to come down and share with us on air. Uh, you had your own program, very meaningful program and all that. And both for the pr uh, person and not the party uh, came through the relationship of us working so close together. And my message was that you cannot look at people, what party or what organization they is in, or uh, uh, the color of the skin, and tell who they are. Yeah, it's always the person, and you was always showing me that you was for me, you was with me, and so I'm happy to have you here today. And we we're gonna have a conversation today and talk about old times and some of the contributions you made during the turkey drive. You always was there, whatever whatever I did, I was involved in so many things in the 50 plus years in this community and you was always there when I called on you. You had suggestions to do. I remember when you started the, the program the re restoring the houses. What right. do you call the it? Ch the challenge program. The challenge yeah. program yeah. there. that uh, Repairing houses. People who couldn't afford to repair them. How the houses. Senior citizens and all that. That was an outstanding program. And there are a few other things. Before we go to break, a few other things. I want you to mention a few other things. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the 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 challenge program is probably the 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 one of the things that that I've been involved with since its foundation in in the late '90s, and I'm most proud of uh, having been there. Uh, but the 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 glory and 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 credit go to Andrew McKnight and his staff. And uh, so we've been around since '97, and 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 uh, we started doing construction training, primarily young men, 17 to 22 year olds. All of them, or almost all of them adjudicated, some without high school diplomas. We wanted to give them construction training, carpentry skills, and this kind of stuff. And we did that by rehabbing houses across the community. So a, a dozen, two dozen, three dozen, four dozen houses. And we're still doing that. And we're doing other things to train those. We've also expanded that uh, activity, uh, Andrew has and his team. And they now have a, a furniture making business that uh, that hopefully will be building ground or breaking ground on a new building down on the peninsula. Uh, to expand that business. And we've sold furniture that have been made here in Wilmington by uh, uh, young people that have come out of the challenge program. Uh, and that's been a wonderful thing. Uh, obviously, the Longwood Foundation, which I've been involved with, has uh, been instrumental in, in, in helping uh, just dozens of, of, of community organizations and, and nonprofits in and around Wilmington to, to provide services right to the people that need it most and the services they need the most. And that's been 
uh, just a blessing for me to be able to be involved in that and and, and help identify. And and uh, you know, of course, that you know, I ran my show, the Republican Hour, yes, yes. and uh, and you helped me organize that and and give me advice and counsel as to how I should set it up and what we should talk about and who should be involved. And uh, and I used to start that show almost every time by saying. You know, I'm Charlie Copeland and I'm a Republican. I sometimes would say I'm a proud Republican. I wouldn't always say I was a proud Republican. I don't always say I'm a proud Republican today. Uh, but uh, but I do believe that it is important to have two political parties yes. that are fighting over the ideas and fighting for your vote because it keeps us both honest. Uh, we can only each each political party can only lie so much uh, before you know they get too far out. And, and it's important to have that point counterpoint so that the right policies get implemented in 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 the in, in Wilmington and Newcastle and Ellesmere and Greenville, wherever it happens to be. Because at the end of the day, we're all humans and we all have the same needs, desires we want. We want better for our children. We want our parents to live safely and hap happily. Uh, we want uh, you know our spouse or our partners to 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 uh, you know, have the the right life that they want, and and those are difficult things and difficult issues, and and so uh, you know, I I come from the Republican side of the ledger, and I, I don't hide it. Uh, I think too many Republicans do hide it, um, but I also think that uh, we also need to recognize that you know, as, as humans, we make mistakes, and not all of our ideas are the right ideas, and we need to be humble and talk to. Uh, Democrats and and by the way they need to to do the same thing and and it's that honesty and, and openness. So I was proud to have the Republican Hour uh, for the period of time I did, and I was uh, uh, and I was so blessed to have your guidance and input and assistance into into how to make that uh, a, a successful. And I think for the for the several years, the four or five years that I ran it, that we had an influence. That we absolutely had an influence. But Charlie, when we come back. We're going to talk about some of those years. We have there's many years we worked together in this community. You was involved in so many things. When we come back, we're going to get into that. I had the pre new president of City Council on there, Ernie Trippy Congo. I've been knowing ever since he was three years old, dealing with his father and mother in the business. And we talked about program uh, for our, our young people that drops out of school. We're having a lot of young We talk, we won't get into that in the detail. This is your spiritual revival, our friend. Remember words and songs of inspiration, constellation, meditation, and education. Stay tuned. There's no pain, Jesus can't feel no hurt that he cannot heal. All things work according to all of God's promises and his hope. a chance to use you for the battle is not yours it belongs to the Lord come on Leandria help me out there is no sadness he cannot
everyone on Medicare. New Medicare Advantage plans are now available. Did you know that you may be eligible for additional Medicare-approved benefits that include free eyeglasses, free hearing aids, free meal delivery, free rides to medical appointments, and much more? The Medicare Benefits Hotline is now open. Just call the toll-free number on your screen now to see if you qualify for additional Medicare benefits and make sure you're getting all the benefits you deserve. Just call 800-520-3805 now. In addition to dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drug coverage, you may also qualify for $0 monthly premiums, $0 deductibles, and no co-pays. Just call the toll-free number on your screen now to see if you're eligible for additional Medicare benefits that may include free eyeglasses, free hearing aids, free meal delivery, free rides to medical appointments, and much more. The call and Medicare benefits review are absolutely free. There's no obligation to enroll. Just call 800-520-3805 to see if you qualify. They come to make you strong. Floating on the sea of trouble. Sorrow falling like rain from the sky. Trotting through life's murky waters. Trials form the tears in your eyes. Don't. Telling you there's a blessing on the other side of food. Mm. We know it's cold, but we're on fire. This tax season, nobody beats Brandy Wine. Nobody. It's an all out price war. You haven't seen prices and furniture, mattresses, rugs, accessories. Anywhere, nor will you anywhere, we'd love you to shop around, because this tax season, nobody beats Brandywine Furniture. from you we really need a touch from you Lord we need to hear your voice our hearts are open we have no choice oh Lord we need a touch from you we really need a touch from you. Send your last rain. Hey, send your last rain. Send your Just one 
from you we really need touch from Everyone on Medicare. New Medicare Advantage plans are now available. Did you know that you may be eligible for additional Medicare-approved benefits that include free eyeglasses, free hearing aids, free meal delivery, free rides to medical appointments, and much more? The Medicare Benefits Hotline is now open. Just call the toll-free number on your screen now to see if you qualify for additional Medicare benefits and make sure you're getting all the benefits you deserve. Just call 800-520-3805 now. In addition to dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drug coverage, you may also qualify for $0 monthly premiums, $0 deductibles, and no copays. Just call the toll-free number on your screen now to see if you're eligible for additional Medicare benefits that may include free eyeglasses, free hearing aids, free meal delivery, free rides to medical appointments, and much more. The call and Medicare benefits review are absolutely free. There's no obligation to enroll. Just call 800-520-3805 to see if you qualify. They come to make you strong Floating on the sea of trouble Sorrow falling like rain from the sky Trotting through life's murky waters Trials form the tears in your eyes Don't Telling you there's a blessing on the other side of food. Mm. We know it's cold, but we're on fire. This tax season, nobody beats brandy wine. Nobody. It's an all out price war. You haven't seen prices and furniture, mattresses, rugs, accessories. Anywhere, nor will you anywhere, we'd love you to shop around, because this tax season, nobody beats Brandywine Furniture. Enjoying this uh, Easter Sunday, and we hope that you remember. If you just joined us, I started off by reminding people that there have, would never been the resurrection if it had not been for the crucifixion. And as we go through the uh, COVID nineteen virus, there are a lot of people are suffering. Uh, today, maybe you're one of them. From uh, one thing after another, people being laid off from work, losing their house, being evicted, all type of thing. That's a form. That's a form of crucifixion. 
When you're going through something, when you're having trials and truths, you're being crucified. It may be different from what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ went through it, but that's a form of crucifixion. And for those of you who go to church, there's an old hymn that says, No cross, no crown. There's a great meaning behind that. A lot of people uh, have gotten spoiled, and due to the virus and all of that, laid off and going through and in the soup lines, some, sometimes you see uh, cars lined up, uh, 10 stacked for miles just to get a box of food. That's a form of crucifixion. But the Bible say, no cross, no crown. There is another thing that's really live within the church folk. Those of you who proclaim to be Christians. There's another thing you have to remember. There's a song say, must Jesus bear the cross alone? And all the world go free. That was answered in the second verse of that hymn. No, there is a cross for everyone, and there is a cross for me. So as you, as you, along with all of us, share these burdens, let's keep in mind that he rose on Easter Sunday that all of us may have a right to the tree of life. With me today, I have one of my friends, not an acquaintance, not a buddy, not a pal, but a young man who has been a friend of mine in all of my accomplishments. You remember him because he had his own program here. He's one of the ones who... Uh, cause the least access to be here today. He shared in that when we were fighting to keep it on the air, Brother Charlie Copeland. Happy to have you here, Charlie. Thank you, Twin. It, it's a pleasure. It really is. Thank you. We left the first segment talking about opportunities, that uh, uh, you are part of opportunities in the community to give people a chance to re uh, restore their homes and different things of that nature. And I, I had a conversation with Trippy Congo, the president of city council, now head of the Cable Commission, and we were talking about opportunities for some of our young people who have dropped out of school. We have a lot of young people who have dropped out of school for what? For some reason or another. A lot of them dropped out because they wasn't making good grades, and nobody, if you're not making good grades, you're not going to sit up in the classroom because the kids, other kids will make fun of you. They call you dumb or, and all of that. So a lot of people drop out of school for different reasons. But when they drop out, we need to have some type of form in order to catch them out there. And you always had that in mind. And reaching out in the community. You want to talk about that? The challenge program was one of the things, but there's so many other things that you shared in in the community. Yeah, I, I mean, the the what I really have a passion about. And when I was in the state senate, you know, I, I I asked the only committee I asked to be on was the education committee, because education is so important. But education is not just primary school and secondary school and college or whatever. It can be that uh, for a lot of kids and a lot of young people, but it's it's job skills and life skills. And and we have so much lost human potential in our society across the country, across the yes. world. Yes. Uh, and 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 we know that. And I mean, and even even Jesus said the poor will always be with you. Absolutely. But the poor deserve opportunity and access to jobs. So that because I, I know people that when I was in high school, I thought that guy or gal is the dumbest idiot in the class. And they've gone on to be hugely successful in their area because school is not the same as life. Yes. And so some people shouldn't be in school per se, but that doesn't mean they should just be on the street corner with nothing to do. Absolutely. And, uh, and you know, I know there's a lot of debate about the minimum wage. And, and when I was in the Senate, I voted for the minimum wage. And I also voted against the minimum wage. I had I, three opportunities to vote for it. 
and and but when you make a fifteen dollar an hour minimum wage, it's hard to hire a sixteen year old to come in at fifteen dollars an hour to, to sweep the floors, you know, wash the windows, run the register, whatever that is. So if we're going to do that, and I'm not arguing whether we should or shouldn't, we need to have something for those young people to do. And that's the, one of the things that the challenge program does is, is a lot of these kids, some of them had no home. They had places they stayed, Absolutely. right? Uh, that's unfair. My kids always had a home, always had a place to stay, right? They always had a meal when they got home. Uh, and so job training, skills, uh, somebody there, a, a, a social worker who really cares to make sure that, that their, their record, if they had one, was being cleaned up. We had a young man who, who, who got pulled in because of a violation of parole, and he got brought into the prison, but they didn't enter him right, so they didn't even know he was there. So here's a young man who just vanished, yeah. and he was in prison, and nobody knew, including the prison, that he was there. But we had somebody on staff who was like, where is this guy? So she went around the community looking for him and found out. And so anyway, we got him out. But but it's it's that and so you need that, right? I mean, you need that. And and this the city government can provide that, the state government, the county government can provide that. So can nonprofits. So you have, you know, West End and 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 a lot of these nonprofits that are in the community. The ones that I mean, your workshop is an example. Yes, yes. That the number of kids today who are going to be, because of their phones and all, involved in video production. Absolutely. It's a it's a an, an industry that is just yes. now taking off. And every one of those kids who has that skill. Skill. Not that not that they want to be the one in front of the camera, because everybody likes to be like I do in front of the camera. But it's the ability to produce, edit, uh, uh, display. I mean, the amount of lousy stuff you see on your phone, the good quality production is important. So those kinds of skills uh, are, are more important for a lot of kids Absolutely. than whether or not you can do trigonometry. Who? When was the last time anybody needed to know what a cosine of the a 48 degree angle was. Nobody does. But but if you don't give them something to do, they're going to find something to that's do. That's exactly right. And they're going to be in the parks, smoking cigarettes, Absolutely. not wearing their masks, whatever it is, right? They're going to get in trouble because that's what you do when you're a kid. Uh, so it is vitally important. And that's, uh, I've been blessed to have been involved in, in a number of different efforts in and around the community, around education, the community education building, which is uh, in town. I've been very, very much involved Absolutely. in that. Absolutely, yes. uh, So yes. Coomba and Great Oaks are in there. Uh, but we're also trying to get wraparound community services. So if you live in the vicinity of that building, uh, we're trying to get uh, our, the, whole, the whole community into the building. So families, uh, extended families, however you want to define that, uh, so that there are services there. So that because we know uh, uh, we, we've brought in you know, folks to, to, to analyze the local community and see what the needs are and have found that, that homelessness or, or home at riskness is is such an important piece of a child's education because if you don't know where you're going home and you don't know there's going to be a meal there, how are you coming to school the next day and going to learn how to read, write, and do arithmetic? You now, can't. one thing about you, you you, you were born and raised in Wilmington. Right? Uh, that's right. The three, three miles from where Caesar Rodney's statue used to be. Uh, I've lived my entire life uh, within that. I mean, I, I'm 58, so thank you for calling me a young man. I, <laughs> I knew you. I had brown hair and, and all, and, and, and you look pretty much like you do today. And now I'm looking old, and you look pretty much like you did 25, 30 years ago. Uh, but, yeah, uh, this is my city. But but that, you know that's under, that's very 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 good, Charlie. You, uh, we you talked about uh, when you was young and <laughs> and all of that in 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 business. You're a business person and all that in the city and and taking the interest that you have taken and still taken in in the community. You're still involved in the community in different things. So it's just it's it's always been a pleasure working with you because those things were always outstanding. Here you're born and raised in Wilmington, and you've always been a business person in Wilmington, a, a, a legislature. Uh, you're involved in the community building. I almost forgot about the, the community building downtown there. I think you have two charter schools in there, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Great Oaks and, uh, and, and Coomba are both in there. And they're they're doing good. Yeah, uh, uh, Coomba does uh, does very very well, and and Great Oaks is doing well. Uh, you know, Great Oaks was a newer startup where Coomba had some, uh, and they're both doing well. And um, uh, full student bodies, and 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 by the way, the you know the the, the stimulus bill that just came through is going to be very helpful to all the all the schools, oh, yes. and but the charter schools in particular, because it's going to give them some assets 
and resources that they wouldn't have had otherwise. So, uh, uh, no, it's and 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 we've we've got some great plans, both for from the community uh, involvement, the schools themselves, and then uh, and 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 some other educational institutions that I think w it will be a it will be a unique feature of Wilmington that no other community in the nation has. Well, at one, you was also head of the Republican Party. You was chairman <laughs> was. of the Republican Party at one time also. Yeah, for four years, uh, from 2013 through 2017. So I was there when when Donald Trump became our candidate for president. Uh, <laughs> and we were very successful, actually, locally. We had, we had some great African-American candidates in the city of Wilmington and uh, won the first Republican won statewide open seat race in 2014 in 20 years, uh, 1994, 2014. But uh, but um, uh, after those four years, I was pretty exhausted with uh, with politics uh, at, 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 at that level, um, just because it's it's a it, it can be a dirty business. Well, since since uh, since I came out of retirement to take this program back over and the things in the community, I'm continuing to do that I've always done. You've always been there, and another young man also has been there was Tom Gordon. I I have to give him credit for that. As we uh, uh, set up the workshop again for our young people to get back into video production, we certainly want to thank him uh, because he he saw fit for me to upgrade. The equipment and all of that. So we're going to try to get him back on there to give him thanks uh, openly. But uh, as you work, still work in the community now, you was traveling for a while, so you're kind of back in the community. So I'm going to extend an invitation anytime you want to come on the Spiritual Revival Hour uh, with what you're doing to bring people up to date with what you're doing. Uh, you're perfectly welcome to come. And again, I want to thank you for the many years of service that you supported me in the things. A lot of things that I've received credit for doing, uh, you were in the background playing a part in that, and I certainly want to thank you for it. Well, thank you. Thank you for what you've been doing. I mean, like it, 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 just being on television right now is, is demonstrative of the 50 years that you've created this opportunity for so many people. All right, so friends, you have been uh, tuned in this Easter Sunday to the Spiritual Revival Hour. Words and songs of consolation, inspiration, meditation, and education. We said a few weeks ago we're going to get back involved with our senior centers and uh, uh, letting our seniors know what programs and services are available for them. Uh, bringing the directors on to talk about what goes on in the center. A lot of people think that seniors just go to the centers there and maybe have a few games to play and have a nice meal and all that. But a lot of activity, positive activity goes on in the senior centers. And a lot of people have centers in their community and they are home and uh, say they have nowhere to go. In order to you to know what goes on to center, we're going to start bringing the directors back on to talk about what their centers offer and maybe to encourage some of you seniors who are home uh, to take a part in the centers. So now the, we seem to be getting the virus under control. So we ask that you could, to pray uh, that it's all a cell down where we can get back to doing what we're doing. I, I, I talk about it sometimes. I live at Ingleside Apartments, and there's so many activities Activities there. We have a beautiful dining room there, beautiful lounge, computer room, and all that. All of that have been closed down, off limits now. We're just like a prison now in most of the high rises. You are confined to your rooms and you can't have visitors and all that. So a lot of us are going through things, even those of us who may not be homeless and all that, even with the uh, comfortabilities that we have, you're still going through with something. So let's pray together, work together. Remember on this Easter Sunday to be your brother's keeper, to be your brother's keeper. And let me close by reminding you, you receive blessings that you may be a blessing to somebody else. Until the next time, on behalf of the staff here at Least Access Channel 28, the Spiritual Revival Hour, I'm Twin B. Brown.